someone asked me whether I was aware of all the people out there who were praying for the president. And I had to say, yes, I am. I felt it. I believe in intercessionary prayer. But I couldn't help but say to that questioner after, sometimes when he was praying, he got a busy signal. It was just me in there ahead of him. <laughs> I think I understand how Abraham Lincoln felt when he said, I have been driven many times to my knees by the overwhelming conviction that I had nowhere else to go. Now I realize it's fashionable in some circles to believe that no one in government should encourage others to read the Bible. That we're, we're told that we'll violate the constitutional separation of church and state established by the Founding Fathers in the First Amendment. The First Amendment was not written to protect people and their laws from religious values. It was written to protect those values from government tyranny. I've said that we must be cautious in claiming God is on our side. I think the real question we must answer is, are we on his side? No matter where we live, we have a promise that can make all the difference. A promise from Jesus to soothe our sorrows, heal our hearts, and drive away our fears. He promised there will never be a dark night that does not end. Our weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. He promised if our hearts are true, his love will be as sure as sunlight. And by dying for us, Jesus showed how far our love should be ready to go all the way. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We all pray so. Americans yearn to explore life's deepest truths and to say their entertainment, or their idea of entertainment is sex and violence and crime is an insult to their goodness and intelligence. We are people who believe love can triumph over hate, creativity over destruction, and hope over despair. And that's why so many millions hunger for God's good news. I've always believed that we were, each of us put here for a reason, that there, there is a plan, somehow a divine plan for all of us. I know now that whatever days are left to me belong to him. I also believe this blessed land was set apart in a very special way. Our forebears came not for gold, but mainly in search of God and the freedom to worship in their own way. We've been a free people living under the law with faith in our maker and in our future. I've said before that the most sublime picture in American history is of George Washington on his knees in the snow at Valley Forge. That image personifies a people who know that it's not enough to depend on our own courage and goodness. We must also seek help from God, our Father and Preserver. We'll never find every answer, solve every problem, or heal every wound, but we can do a lot if we walk together down that one path that we know provides real hope. The morality and values such faith implies are deeply embedded in our national character. Our country embraces those principles by design and we abandon them at our peril. My experience in this office I hold has only deepened a belief I've held for many years. Within the covers of that single book are all the answers to all the problems that face us today if we'd only read and believe. <laughs>